I hope your allergy test is going well so far. While you wait, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about some of the treatment options uh, for allergies, and we'll review this a little bit later when you come back into the office to see me. There are basically three different options for treating allergies. The first we like to think of as being avoidance. Sometimes after an allergy test, you're able to identify what it is you're allergic to, and you're able to ultimately avoid that substance. A very simple example of this is if you have a cat. If you're allergic to the cat and you get rid of the cat, you can avoid that allergy. Sometimes avoidance is not possible because you're allergic to things that are in the environment all the time. Even patients who try avoidance, even with the cleanest of houses, with filters, with vacuuming, this can only potentially treat about 10 to 15 percent of allergies. The next option for allergy therapy would be to consider medications. Many of these medications you're definitely familiar with and include decongestant sprays, antihistamines. Sometimes we can manage symptoms with just one type of medication. Sometimes it takes many different types of medications. Some of the most effective medications for treating allergies include topical nasal steroid sprays like Flonase, topical antihistamine sprays like Astelin, oral antihistamines like Zyrtec or Claritin, or sometimes even Benadryl, which is a classic antihistamine. Benadryl specifically, though, can cause a lot of sedation. Some patients do try to manage their symptoms with decongestants like pseudoephedrine. Personally, this is not my favorite type of medication as I feel like the side effects are sometimes worse. In the cases of more mild allergies, sometimes avoidance and medication is all that we need to do in order to manage the symptoms. We will have a handout that talks a little bit more about the allergies and the severity of your allergies when we visit after your allergy test. A third treatment option includes what is called immunotherapy. This has also classically been called allergy shots. The basis behind allergy immunotherapy is finding out exactly what you are allergic to and how severe your allergy is. Once we know those two answers, we can then potentially retrain your immune system so that it's not as allergic or doesn't respond at all to certain previous allergies. After your allergy test, we'll have a list of the types of substances that you're allergic to and the severity. Allergy immunotherapy is built upon the principle of giving your immune system very small amounts of known allergic substances that we call antigens. At first, we give you a very dilute or small amount of that antigen. Each week, you will come in for allergy shots. Initially, you will get such low doses of these antigens that your immune system recognizes that you're allergic, but because it is at such a low concentration, it chooses not to respond. Instead of getting itchy, watery eyes, nasal congestion, sneezing, and coughing, you may get some very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. Each week, we give you a repeat injection of those known antigens at very low levels. Over approximately six months to a year, we escalate the concentrations of those antigens higher and higher. What this does is allows your immune system an opportunity to see these antigens on a regular basis, again at a low concentration, so that it doesn't respond. After about six months to a year of what we call escalation, we eventually can get to a concentration that's high enough to cause symptom improvement as we retrain the immune system. Many patients ask how effective is immunotherapy? Studies have shown that about 80% of patients will have an 80% reduction in their symptoms after completing one year of immunotherapy. Because of this process of starting with very dilute amount of antigen and ramping up to more concentrated amounts, it unfortunately takes some time for patients to feel symptom improvement. One of the drawbacks to allergy immunotherapy is that it is not a very quick process. 
there has to be a commitment of at least a year while we escalate to a maintenance dose. After a successful escalation period, then patients go into maintenance. Maintenance can sometimes last two to even five years while we continue to retrain your immune system to not recognize your known allergens as foreign substances. Each week as the patient comes in during the escalation phase, we increase the dose slightly. Many patients ask what happens if I miss a dose or miss a week. Initially, that's not such a big issue as we do have a window of about four to 10 days in which we can give you that allergy shot. If that happens once or twice, it's usually not such a big deal. If that starts happening frequently, then sometimes we cannot escalate the doses each week and so patients progress more slowly. If this type of commitment is hard, sometimes that type of patient wouldn't want to consider allergy immunotherapy if lifestyle or time commitments are such that they can't make it in on a weekly basis. After successful escalation, the patient then moves into what is called maintenance. At this point, we will be giving the patient concentrate that is at the highest dose without producing any sort of allergic reaction. This phase lasts for an additional three to five years and helps to finish retraining the immune system. Once the patient reaches maintenance, that is usually when we see an 80% reduction in symptoms. Some patients ask how long will allergy therapy last? The current studies show that most patients will see symptom improvement anywhere between 10 to 15 years after completing successful immunotherapy. Unfortunately, some patients will have shorter, around five years, but some patients have seen even sometimes up to 25 years of symptom improvement. Sometimes patients describe allergy immunotherapy as being potentially expensive. We will work with insurance companies to find out about covered services this usually is covered by insurances, however, sometimes co-pays and deductibles are not. One thing to think about, however, is if you do have symptom improvement in the order of five to 15 or even 25 years, think of all the money that can be saved on medications, avoiding nasal sprays, antihistamines, and things like pseudoephedrine. It may seem counterintuitive, but during the escalation phase, patients do not always have much in the way of symptom improvement. What this means is that sometimes patients will need to use medications during allergy seasons that are particularly severe for them. This is very important at helping to manage symptoms during the escalation phase. Immunotherapy does require a significant commitment. Sometimes patients have changes in their lifestyle, employment, moving, marriage, they can make it so that a commitment of 18 months to two years is not possible. If these are situations in your life, then potentially right now immunotherapy might not be the right idea for you. What I would recommend instead is managing potentially with medications alone. If you can give a commitment of 18 months to maybe two years, however, this is the time frame that would allow us to maximally retrain your immune system and potentially give you the symptom relief that we've talked about. I would hate to see you start immunotherapy, get three or six months into it, and then unfortunately have to stop, and then ultimately say, oh, I tried allergy immunotherapy and it didn't work. In reality, we need a long enough treatment plan and time in order to retrain the immune system. Now that we've talked through several of the treatment options, let's say you'd like to proceed with allergy immunotherapy. What happens next is we put together a vial of all of the different antigens that you're allergic to, and we mix that up and prepare for your first allergy injection. You'll come into the office having gotten a prescription for a rescue medication called epinephrine, classically called the EpiPen. When you come into the office, you'll meet with the allergy nurse where you'll get instructed on the EpiPen as well as the risks and benefits of the allergy shot for that day. Let's talk through some of those now. Most commonly, patients will have local swelling, irritation, or some tenderness at the injection site. 
I often say this is very similar to the actual allergy test that you had today. There is unfortunately a 2% chance of a full body allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. This can sometimes manifest as difficulty breathing, airway issues, swelling in the lips or tongue, causing difficulty swallowing. This can be a very scary reaction. The reason that we do the allergy shots in the office and require that you stay with us is so that we can potentially treat anaphylaxis if it were to happen. Luckily, the risk of anaphylaxis is only about 2%. By having you wait for 20 minutes in the office after your shot, we can keep an eye on you and make sure that you're not having this type of reaction. If something like this happens, we are prepared to treat you and take care of you here in our office to minimize any potential long-term risks. If anaphylaxis were to happen, we would also reevaluate your concentrations of antigen and potentially reformulate your allergy shots. There are several things that we do to try and make this process as safe as possible. The first is that we currently only do allergy shots in our office and we require you to wait 20 minutes. The next thing is that we verify your serum with a custom prescription and some computer software that verifies that we are giving the right patient the right serum at the right concentrations. The third thing, which I've already mentioned, is that the patient has an active prescription and holds an EpiPen. EpiPens contain a medication called adrenaline and they're very commonly used by people who have severe reactions to things like peanuts or bee stings. We don't require that you keep your EpiPen with you at all times. We do require that you bring your EpiPen with you to the actual visit for your allergy injection that visit. Another thing that we often consider with allergy immunotherapy is that when should you get a shot and when you should not. It's obvious that you should get a shot when you're feeling well and having no other issues. The more common question is when should I not get an allergy shot? Classically, I discuss with patients that if they're having a significant asthmatic reaction, difficulty breathing, we may want to consider not doing an allergy shot at that time. If you have a common cold or other sickness or illness that's not necessarily causing any breathing issues, we can still consider doing the allergy shot that day. Sometimes we will also obtain what's called a pulmonary function test or PFT in the office. This is very helpful for checking how well a patient is breathing by checking the volume of oxygen that they have basically in their lungs. In the rare event that a patient gets an allergy shot, waits 20 minutes, has no reaction, and then drives home and has a reaction shortly thereafter, that is an appropriate time to use the EpiPen. If the reaction happens during the office visit or during the 20 minutes of waiting, we have the appropriate medications to treat the allergic reaction in our office. If you feel any sort of mouth swelling, tongue swelling, throat swelling, or difficulty breathing after your allergy shot, you should consider using your EpiPen and then proceeding to the nearest emergency department. The EpiPen will help manage the symptoms until you are seen. It is not meant to be the sole treatment for allergy anaphylaxis, and that does not stop further potential reactions. So it is very important to go to the emergency department if you feel any of those symptoms once you're home. Next, we should speak briefly about mold allergies. Mold allergies are very common in patients, particularly with chronic sinusitis. Medication is not very effective at treating molds. This leaves us basically with avoidance or immunotherapy. There are some informational packets about potential mold avoidance, particularly in diet or things to do at home, which we can share with you if interested. Immunotherapy for mold allergies has been shown to be very effective. Sometimes the diet is very difficult and hard to follow. This ends the video and I hope it hasn't been too boring, been somewhat informative and hopefully has helped to answer some of your questions. I will see you shortly to discuss the number and severity of allergens that you may have. We'll talk through the basics of avoidance, medication, and immunotherapy. 
If you have any questions, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Thanks.